Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and let's talk about the Hi-Fi-Min Audivina closed back, full size, planar magnetic headphone that is uh, has an MSRP of two thousand US dollars. Um, and I'm going to confess, this, confess this one is uh, is going to be a difficult one. <laughs> um, it, here it is. Even before we get to, to shameless self-promotion, I don't like this headphone. I think it was a bad miss on Hi-Fi Men's part. A really bad miss. And I don't think anyone should buy it. Straight up. If you've been watching this channel and watch me fawn, I think rightly, over Hi-Fi Men's open back offerings, uh, you may start to think that I am a Hi-Fi Men shill. Um, this video should disabuse you of that notion. Hi-Fi Men sent me three of these. This is the third set of these because I kept hearing a consistent issue um, with the first two sets. Sent them in to be evaluated um, and got this third set back and it was the same issue. And I will unpack that here as the, uh, as the review progresses. But uh, that, that's my takeaway here, is that this product at this price point, really any price point, is just a bad miss. Uh, it probably should not be on the market in this form. And um, I don't think you should buy it. Now, if, um, now I give hi -Fi Men a lot of credit because I have been talking to my rep at hi -Fi Men, asking questions about what went on here and how did this come to be the way that it is and uh, didn't really get clear straight answers on that but to their credit they never uh, told me that I shouldn't do this video they never um, formally asked if uh, I uh, uh, asked me to not do this they they I will admit that there was like are you sure you want to review this if you hate it so much kind of a question and I told them I'm like look my honesty is my brand um, it's been in the picture over my shoulder in previous reviews. People know that I have it. Uh, for me to say nothing would not look good. And uh, that wouldn't look good for me and it wouldn't look good for you either. And uh, they agreed. So here we are um, with me explaining. I'm going to attempt to explain in a, in a way that uh, is, is, is fair. Um, there are a couple of strengths here that are worth pointing out that are uh, things for hi fi men to build on in the future if they want to try again at a closed back planar up at this price range. So I'll talk about those too. Um, but yeah, the reasons why I say all of this, why it's a huge miss, very disappointing, and not something that I think anyone should buy in this current form, uh, stick around after shameless self promotion and I will explain why. All right, here we go shameless self promotion. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Please remember to hit that like button, and if you haven't, please subscribe. Also, I have a Patreon set up so that you can help support me on a monthly basis, and I've set up a PayPal donation so that you can help me out in that way too if a monthly dis a subscription does not make sense for you. Links for all of that, including the benefits, in the description below. Please check those out. All right, on with the show. All right, let me uh, get a couple of other things out of the way here. Um, first of all, this is a preference-based hobby. I fully recognize and endorse that and, and agree with that. So if you are really stunned with my intro that uh, this is falls into the pro category of products that not only do I not like it, but I don't think anyone should buy it um, because you really like it, uh, that's okay. Your ears can be different enough to mine and your preferences can be different enough to, uh, to mine that you may really like it and that's fine. We can still be friends. Okay. I'm also not going to spend any time on the, the packaging, the accessories, etc. That because of my bottom takeaway, I just feel very strongly that this shouldn't be in its current form that I'm just not going to spend time on that. We will just get into why um, why I am saying what I'm saying that this one is a miss, okay? Um, now, I did mention in the intro that there are some things, uh, a couple of strengths here that Hi-Fi Men can build on uh, going forward. 
And so let me go ahead and talk about those right now. They are, they are Sonic. For one, in a closed back uh, headphone, they did pull off a pretty big soundstage. Surprisingly big for a closed back. Um, in fact, I dare say that the soundstage here is significantly bigger than a fair number of open backs. Like it's going to trounce the soundstage size of the Sennheiser HD 600 series, for example. It's not quite as big as hi Feynman's big open back egg-shaped offerings like the Aria or the HE 1000 series, you know, those that have that kind of form factor. But it's also like not in any way tiny there in the sound stage. So that's good that, that they accomplished that if that was indeed a goal. Um, so that's something that they can build on for hopefully a future and improved iteration of this or another closed back model. The other strength here that we'll go ahead and talk about is that there is a lot of mid bass impact. There is quite a bit of dynamic oomph and punch there through the mid bass. Uh, the bass extension isn't great, so it's not really slammy or rumbly, but for like the, the attack of kick drums and the pluck of bass guitar strings and all of that, there is a fair amount of dynamic impact in there that uh, approaches the fun um, side of the ledger. So that is also a strength that I uh, am encouraged to see come out of a hi Feynman headphone, so hopefully that they, they will keep that and build on that for the future as well. And then I do think that the overall build uh, is is fine with the uh, the wood cups and the you know just the it has the the HE one thousand series kind of aesthetic to it and the the headband system and all of that. So I mean, the comfort wise with the pads and everything, um, it's good. Okay, um, like it is a little on the heavier side because it's a wooden closed back headphone. Okay, but it it distributes the weight well and all of that so i mean comfort issues aren't really a thing okay let's get on with the rest of the stuff then it's a closed back headphone i understand it from like interviews that dr fong has done and all of that that um this was intended for more of a professional use pro market kind of a thing uh, at least in terms of like its, its intended audience. Now, even in that case, I still don't recommend it. Okay, uh, I just think there are better options out there for that, um, even in the closed back segment of the market. All right, so there's that. Now, it's so closed back, right? Why do we buy a closed back? We want isolation, usually, somehow. We want to hold ambient sounds out. We want to hold music sounds in. And so that we can work in a noisy-er environment and uh, just hear the music and not be just distracted by outside sounds. Or we are working shoulder to shoulder with neighbors. You know, we have people around close by that don't always want to hear our music, which, of course, you know, we're audiophiles. We know music, right? They don't like what we like. That's their loss, okay? That's, but that's another story for, that's a story for a different day. Okay, the isolation on this is not good, and it's also very weird, okay? Uh, let me unpack that a little bit. For one thing, there is not a ton of overall attenuation. Um, even with my own voice and with ambient room sounds going on, like when the headphone is off, compared to when it is on. It does attenuate some of the higher frequencies. All right, so... I don't think the microphone is picking it up, but my desktop PC is off to my left and it does have this probably a little bit too much fan noise uh, going on. And so I do hear it a little bit as I'm sitting here talking. The higher pitched part of the fan noise is being attenuated uh, by just having this headphone on my head a, a fair amount. But the mids and low end of it are not. And there's this very odd thing that's happening where it sounds like even though the higher pitched frequencies of the fan noise are being attenuated, the like <sighs> fans don't necessarily have a fundamental frequency, but something like a fundamental frequency of that fan noise sounds like it goes up in pitch just a little bit when I put these on and either gets louder or just comes across as a little bit louder, say, staying at the same level, just because it's a little bit higher in pitch, okay? So like I said, it's weird. 
So I don't know that there is actually an acoustic amplification effect going on inside the cup. Given the frequency response of this thing, there might be. There might be. We'll come back to that. But for ambient sounds, particularly lower pitch sounds, the lower mid-range and all of that, it does next to nothing. And if anything makes it more noticeable somehow in this very odd sort of way. So if the, the goal there was attenuation, not really happening through some pretty important frequency ranges. Now, as far as sound leakage, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It does not hold sound in all that great. I don't think it would be all that much better than an open back headphone. If you were to use this in like an office cubicle situation, your cubicle neighbors will probably still hear what you're hearing. All right, so there's that. And so that kind of, to me, right out of the gate kind of eliminates its usefulness, its utility as a closed back headphone and that it doesn't do what closed back headphones need to do to become worthwhile, to become worth the sonic sacrifices that we make going from open and close um, to have that closed back said, uh, headphone there. Like it just, it doesn't overcome those with the isolation uh, and that sort of thing. All right, so that's big problem number one before we even get to the actual sound that these produce. Let's talk about the actual sound that these produce. The frequency response on these things is all over the place. It is peaky. It is spiky. There are dips. <laughs> there are just, it's erratic is the best word that I can, I can come up with here. There's not a lot of sub bass extension. There's a pretty aggressive roll off below about 50, 60 hertz, I want to say. There is that pretty forward, like 60 to 120 hertz range-ish, somewhere in there where I mentioned that punch earlier, where there's a fair amount of presence and a fair amount of uh, physical impact and some um, you know, hit there. So, uh, some okay detail and resolution there through that low end and that narrow frequency range there. Um, the mid-range, the tonal balance is off, shouty, honky, hollow and timbre overall. Sounds nasally, kind of congested to go along with it. Um, just kind of a mess, honestly. There is a peak in the treble too. Some of the treble timbre isn't terrible, but there is also a peak in the treble where there is a lot of sibilance, a lot of harshness, a lot of sharpness, some piercing S's and T's and aggressively played cymbals can get very, very fatiguing and piercing very quickly. Okay, um, if you wanted me to nail down what I think its sound signature from a frequency response standpoint could be called, I would go with W because of that kind of uh, mid-bass emphasis, like upper, not quite mid-bass, but like, you know, upper sub-bass, lower mid-bass emphasis somewhere in the mid-range where it's got that shout honk hollow timbre there's a little bit of an emphasis there and then there's that treble peak in there too so kind of a w but a trail off in terms of the bass extension there on the low end all right um so there's that can you overcome that with eq i mean probably but you are gonna need some very, like that's gonna, if you're gonna EQ this thing, you're, it's gonna be a huge time commitment because there are peaks and valleys in the frequency response all over the place. Uh, and so you're gonna need some most likely software EQ where you can set uh, target frequencies, you can set a really high Q factor on them so that you can really target that, uh, those peaks and those valleys and all of that without messing up something else somewhere you're probably gonna to wanna to bring in a sub bass shelf as well, or bring up the sub bass and all of that. I didn't try all of that because I'm not really an EQer, and then uh, it doesn't solve the other problem that I'm about to mention, um, which we'll go ahead and get to now. This problem might be a me problem because I have yet to hear anyone back me up on this. So either this headphone just doesn't get along well with my ears, or it is just the first one to show me that I have a problem with my ears that no other headphone has ever shown me before. I hope that's not the case. 
Okay. Um, channel imbalance, a very noticeable one to me. Vocals that sound like they should be dead center are pulled to my right. Uh, not all the way hard panned right, not just to the right either, but like to the right, okay? Almost like halfway, to me it sounds like basically halfway between center and far right. That's where the center image sets up. Has done that on all three sets that I have had. Two of them went in to uh, the North American um, Distribution Center for evaluation. I got the dreaded response, we don't hear it. I can't explain that. I don't have measuring uh, gear on me here uh, in my house to, to do anything with. Other reviewers who I have talked to about this one, because I did, I did break my rule here where I read other reviews and talked to other reviewers about these because I really wanted to be sure that what I was saying was accurate on this okay, and, and fair. Um, a lot of them don't like it. Okay. But we'll, <laughs> we'll leave that there. I will let them speak for themselves as they choose to release the, their reviews in time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the channel imbalance, though, is really persistent for me. Really persistent and very noticeable and very irritating. And when I first put it on with the first set, I'm like, maybe they just need some break-in. So I broke those things in for like 50 hours plus, And the only thing that happened is... <laughs> is the center image pulled further to the right. I'm like, maybe it's just a brain burn in thing for me and it'll be fine after I listen to them for a while. But every time I try to sit down and listen to these things and force myself to get used to that presentation, that Im image just sounded like it drifted further to the right for me. So then I'm like, okay, I know that some of my gear, my, my Vioelectric HPA V281 amplifier, my Berkeley Alpha Series 2 DAC and all of that, like the, the, the amp, has a knob on it for balance control and 12 o'clock is dead center supposedly where both channels have the same output level and all of that i had to turn that to about the nine o'clock position to pull the vocal center image to the center but then it still sounded like the center image for like the bass okay kick drum hits that were nor that are normally centered, bass uh, guitar plucks that are normally centered, okay? An amount of rumble that is normally centered sounded like it was about here, okay? Over here they were together, but when I pulled vocals here, the bass was here, okay? On the VIO with the, I'm pretty sure that's an analog uh, channel level control. On the Berkeley, which has a digital volume control, what I observed is that to pull the vocal image to the center, I had to lower the, uh, the volume on the right channel by two full units, if you will. The digital volume control on that Berkeley goes from zero to 60 in 0.1 increments. And so we're talking about a full 2.0 difference between the channels to get that center image, that vocal center image, to sound like it was centered. I did not notice the uh, bass discontinuity that I did with the bio, and that could be a difference between digital volume control and analog vol volume control. Um, but I still had that 2.0 difference there on the, the digital volume control on that thing. And again, all three sets did it. Um, I asked hi fi men if whoever evaluated those that said they couldn't hear it had uh, measurements for them and they said the person I talked to didn't know and I never got a follow-up on that, okay? Um, so I don't know if someone is going to measure a channel imbalance frequency response between channels. I've talked to one other reviewer who has measurement gear who uh, didn't hear that and didn't say that they measured it, but didn't get a chance to talk to them for very long. We'll find out if and when that review releases in the future. <clears throat> okay, but it was very noticeable for me and very distracting and all that. Okay, um, Hi Feynman wanted to blame my amp for those th that imbalance. My response to that was one, this is, I've listened to most Hi Feynman headphones and this is the only one that does that on any of my amps. But I mean, I have tried a bunch of them 
my Vio V281. I have the uh, the uh, Headamp GSX Mini in now. I've got Lake People G111 Mark II. Let's see, I put this on my Cord Hugo II. I tried it on my KN N6 Mark II DAP with the EO2 module, okay? Um, I tried different cables. I tried turning the cable leads around, okay? Um, I put my, I took my switches, my XLR and my RCA switches that are on my desk out, went directly from DAC to amp and then tried this. Just no matter what I did, that channel imbalance persisted on all three sets to my ears. Again, maybe this is just a me problem. I don't know, but something is very weird with that, that this is the only headphone that does that to me. Okay. Is that enough? That's probably enough. Okay. Um, I don't want to just be beating a dead horse here. So good on this, the width of the soundstage. I can't really comment about the imaging and the spatial aspects of the sound because of that odd channel balance thing. It just never sounded quite right. Okay. I couldn't really place things all that well. Like it's like one side's compressed and the other side is stretched. I don't, it, Okay, so I can't really comment there. But at least in terms of the soundstage size, decent. Good mid-bass impact, okay? Good, the comfort, fine, even for a relatively heavy, you know, wooden closed back headphone. Those are things to build on going forward. I don't know what to say about the frequency response and how erratic it is. Like this is the company that gave us Susvara HE1000, Aria, you know, Ananda Edition XS, etc. They know how to tune a headphone. I know that they have some other closed backs. My power just went out because there's a storm in the area. I'll be back when it comes back. All right, the power is back on. Where was I? I was talking about how surprising and really kind of troubling it is that a company like Hi-Fi Men, which gave us all these wonderful headphones, and even with their closed backs, like the, the uh, Sundara Closed, the HER9, the HER10D, those had some tuning issues here and there, um, weren't as overall poor in their tuning as this one is to my ear, and did not give me the channel balance issues that all three of these sets that I had gave me on them. They were a little bit overpriced. hi Feynman recognized that and dropped the prices of those closed back models down pretty soon, like after their release, honestly, and made them much more price performance appropriate. And, you know, at that point, they're, they're not great, but they're fine. Okay. Um, the point that I'm making here, and I'm, I don't want to get into speculating about motivations, but uh, so I'm just going to draw conclusions about like what I can see in here is Hi-Fi Man is a company who knows how to tune a headphone. They know what sounds good. Okay. In my opinion, they really are leading the industry in all around performance with their egg shaped uh, open backs and the Susfara. Everyone else is in the trailing position on those. Like other companies, now you don't have to like hi fi Min as much as I do, okay? But in terms of their complete technical package and their timbral accuracy and all of that, everyone else that I have heard is, in, is jockeying for second place behind them right now. They're just out in front of everybody with that egg-shaped planar open back line and the Susvara. So they know how to make a good headphone. I just, it is so baffling to me how this came to be given what they've made before. I don't understand. Someone either made a really bad decision or they just really, I don't know, maybe they just got lucky. I, I mean, I should not, again, I should not speculate on motivations. So apologies there. I'm just saying that Something went wrong here that is just deeply baffling and shocking given how remarkably consistent Hi-Fi Men has been with their open backs and that at least their, the closed backs that they have offered recently are just not horrendous, okay? They're at least okay. This one is not. This one is just bad. All right, that's enough. 
Um, I'm Wave Theory. Thanks for watching. Hopefully the next one will be more fun. Uh, comment down below if, uh, uh, if you haven't yet. Leave a like, subscribe, check out my PayPal, my Patreon, and all of those things. And uh, as always, maybe on a different headphone, enjoy the music.